In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a barren wasteland lava base. Welcome to another Artist Opus video. Today we're going to be painting this barren wasteland lava base. So we've not gone for the kind of conventional uh, like sooty matte black and then lava approach. We've gone for something a little bit more of a middle ground and the reason for that is I wanted to be echoing the colours that I've got on the model uh, below on the base. Maybe I could have gone for more contrast and gone for the other method but this is just an alternate way for doing it. Uh, the method for building the base is pretty simple. Uh, I outlined that in the beginning and then colour wise it's just a load of uh, mashing around, wet blending and dry brushing and a little bit of airbrushing around the edges. Super practical, pretty fast. If you're doing this over multiple bases at the same time it gets way 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 more efficient but if you're just doing one then maybe just to kind of like bed in, have fun, sprinkle on some skulls or some tufts if you really want to spruce it up. It's quite a fun method and it's really enjoyable. So if you like the video, please give us a like, please comment, please subscribe. And if you'd like to see the Great Unclean one featured in this video, check out uh, some videos we will link below. Uh, we've done a fantastic job on this guy in just three hours, pretty much. And this base is kind of the icing on the cake just to get him finished off. All right, so here is our base. It's a pretty simple one. It is just a piece of torn cork to the right size. And then I've layered PVA on the base to kind of give it a more blobby, less uh, slightly textured finish like the GW bases have. And then these blobs are simply balls of green stuff that I've let dry. And then I've chopped them, not always in the middle because it makes them look more organic if some of them are kind of looking like they're about to burst, um, like this one here in particular. And uh, that is it. Uh, you do all of that and then PVA once more over all these areas to make sure the blobs Kind of seamlessly fit in with uh, the larvary area underneath them and then the lot this is extremely important has been hit with two stages of monitorum varnish from a can and the reason that you do that is cork is a little bit soft and it helps protect it but also it makes your ground earth way more resilient and whether you're gaming or not it's just nice to know that the surface you're working on isn't volatile and isn't water soluble so the pva here now that that's been sealed um, pva is water soluble so if you paint on top of it you actually make it softer and it can start breaking down. So that varnish just makes everything that's there permanent and will give us a much easier ride. Okay, so we've been primed Chaos Black. You can go in to the recesses and try and make sure that they stay dark with uh, some Chaos Black or uh, I've used Phileo 950 Black, personal favorite. Um, <clears throat> if you want, you can do that by hand or with an airbrush. I've done it with an airbrush, but it doesn't particularly matter either way. So we're gonna be doing some weird stuff on top of this base, which might uh, feel a little bit strange, but what I'm gonna do is Take some dots of our colors, so black, which is obviously incredibly strong. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna get a few different browns. Obviously, if your base has texture on that is too subtle, using neat paint like this will obscure it. Um, this is not a subtly textured base, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Goes without saying as well, but this is my default basing and wash brush. Please don't use a gorgeous size three <laughs> series S brush and knee out of the box for this. You also need something a bit splayed and beaten up. Uh, it'll behave a lot better. So do hold that in mind, bit of death claw. Someone's gonna tell me off for dipping in here and contaminating my paint, but I'll just have to get over it, won't they? So I've not picked a particular kind of specific theme here. I'm just dotting wherever. Um, I will, however, try and keep things darker towards the edges. So I might go in and use a couple of dots of black. Keep your water close at hand. You're gonna need quite a lot of it. Um, here we go. And let's get rocking. So, so I'm gonna start by stippling all of the lightest areas and I'm just smudging them into the base trying to not touch the darker colors yet, but it doesn't matter if you uh, if you touch them in a bit, that's absolutely fine. So having done it with the lighter colors, I'm now gonna start pushing those in and blending them in with the slightly darker browns. And you can absolutely come in and add more paint here. So if you feel like you've missed a section or um, your paint was too light or whatever, don't worry about it. So we've got our black getting involved now. Now this is gonna be, obviously black is an extremely strong and potent color. So the moment you start using the black, you're gonna feel like you're drowning everything else out. Just stick with it. 
obviously you don't want to put too much black on your piece at the start. But we can absolutely go into our areas that are predominantly black and then add in other colors. Like I said, I want to keep my edges darkish, so work with that. Your paint needs to be quite thick here. If it's too thin, it will start drying before you've kind of achieved what you want to. And then it's a matter of starting the lighter sections and bringing them towards the darker ones. Now, I've already done this, I've already done this in one step, but we need to do it now to kind of make things a little bit more subtle otherwise it, it will literally look like we've just blobbed paint about rather than we've made a nice organic surface which is of course the goal. So take your lighter paints and pull them towards those black sections. Don't go back into them like I just did there with your dark paint. Just carry on going to water and go from light to dark all over the base. As I said if you want to go and add some more in that's absolutely fine. And it's basically a matter of just going backwards and forwards until you're happy with the overall result. Um, it will feel quite scary at first. Don't worry about it. It's a weird technique and it's probably not something you've really done close to before, but it's like a wet version of using pigment. Um, it's very fast because if it's not fast, you screwed it up. <laughs> so you have to go quick, which is kind of nice and I, I really like about it. All right, I've just put a little bit of white in my airbrush. Uh, there was some black in there anyway, which is why it's turned out slightly gray. Not too much of an issue though. So what we're doing here is we're just pre-shading. So our first stage is a mix of Word Bearers Red, which is kind of a very, uh, it's a weird mix between brown and red. We like that color and then contrast flesh terrors red which I absolutely love. This makes a pretty disgusting looking blood like color and I'm going to be aiming that um, anywhere where I'd like to be a bit darker so kind of uh, carefully around the bottoms of the blobs and then also up against the, uh, the sides of the rocks. I want things to get brighter towards the edge of the base but I'm also going to have things kind of fade into being brighter around the blobs so just generally kind of following the areas that I've left darker from my first stage is appreciating. I've not worried about cleaning my brush up too much between uh, colors, which I'll say orange. We're gonna aim to fade this carefully. We cover quite a lot of our previous red because this will really kind of ramp it up, but then also a bit of our untouched white. So take your time, it's gonna go pretty fast anyway hit all of those areas that are kind of on the border between the red and the white. So we're moving on to Fire Dragon Bright now. Again, I'm not worried too much about um, kind of keeping things super pristine between colors. It, it doesn't matter if we've got a bit of one mixed in with the other. Exactly the same as last time. This stage will probably pretty much cover over all of the white that we put down. That's fine. When you're on the blobs, do take your time on them. Try and just hit them on the tops. And we'll do that all the way around. All right, so we have added a little bit of fan favorite orange fluoro to the mix. Yep, there we go. So as you can see on my palette, we've gone super bright. We've mixed in a bit of fluoro yellow and flash gets yellow, exactly with the last one. Make sure you've got this mix right, he says. And maybe dial down the pressure a little bit, depending what you normally airbrush at, because we're trying to be precise with this. So it's really important we don't obscure the previous stage. We'll start at the edges where we're nice and safe. And then particularly um, for getting the blobs. Test on my hand, just like dry brushing. It's very important you don't have too much pressure on for stuff like that because you will just overspray everywhere and that'll kind of lose the effect that we're going for. Same again, all the way around. Okay, I imagine it's a surprise to everyone here. We've gone back to a mix of Flesh Terror's Red and Vallejo Flat Black. 
And what we're going to be doing here is with extreme caution, exaggerating the dark sections. So um, particularly like getting close towards the rocks, but any of the areas where we have decided to specifically make things dark. We're gonna to look to build up the contrast. So we'll do this all over and we're just doing exactly the opposite of what we have been doing before. So we've added some more black in, it's pretty much pure black. This is the final stage and again, take care. And you just wanna hit just about in the areas that you touched last time. This land a massive amount in terms of contrast on the piece and uh, all your brighter stuff will look brighter because it's more likely that it's next to something dark. All right, so that all over within the darker sections. Okay, so the lava pretty much done. It's just a matter of rocking on with the top of the base. So we're starting off with a little bit of doom ball. I'm gonna take care to kind of try and put at least the first stage of dry brushing roughly on top of its own color. So anywhere I can see the doom ball on the base, I'm gonna give it a little bit of TLC. Then we'll jump through and sequence through the other colors. The point here is that we're gonna have a base by the end of things that doesn't look consistent. It doesn't look like it's all exactly the same and it should look like there's some kind of like dark volcanic -y deposits kind of uh, uh, sooty, uh, sooty type colors just really changing the landscape. So jump between the two and then what I'll do is I will introduce a bone color and then we'll add that bone color to each and carry on all over the base. Got a little bit of Screaming Skull on the palette. Work that into our brush, which should be holding kind of a, a bit of both of those colors now, both the Doom Ball and the Tau Light Ochre. And really carefully, I'm just gonna take my time, and go over all of the base. I'm not doing this in a particular direction. It's kind of circular motions and you wanna get every single part of the base with a light sheen of this. Don't forget, you've got your edges of your rocks here. Don't worry if this is a little bit too bright, we are gonna be hitting it all with a wash and that'll help drag it back down. So I've got some Doom Ball Flesh Terrors and Below Black on my palette. Just pop a couple of drops of any kind of mid-tone brown wash in there. A little bit of water and take this over the entire thing. You can use a far bigger brush than this if you like. I'm currently using my very sad and depleted size three all over the model and we don't have to worry about this kind of breaking our texture paint or anything like that because of the layers of varnish that we put down previously. So we've got our all over wash down. I'm gonna quickly do, get some of our black on our palette, wash it right down, like right down. It's extremely strong. And before we're dry, any area where I really want to Push the contrast, uh, particularly on the cracks. I really like the effect of having the, the recesses nice and deep and dark. I'm just gonna hop around and just the, the same kind of principles as we used with our initial stippling, you can smush things about and fade that in as appropriate. So that section is particularly black, therefore I'll have a bit of a darker wash there. You can go back in with a brown in this way as well. It's just a pretty organic backwards and forwards process. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna very carefully, because this is potent stuff and using inks and dry brushes is a dangerous mix, take some of our Flesh Terrors Red. We're quickly gonna run around the side sections of all these walls and the only areas I'm hitting are ones that are facing the lava. So I'm not gonna be getting it on top, ideally. You might get a little bit of overspill, but I'm not aiming to get any of this on top. I'm just looking to get on the edges and then I'm gonna quickly just sequence through the paints that we use to dry, uh, to airbrush the rest of the model. So what I'm looking to do is kind of reflect the glowing nature of those and scoop my way around and suggest that they are, uh, they are lighting these rocks that are next to them. Okay, so time for the satisfying final stage, which is of course painting the base room black. This is really important. So this will frame the entire thing. It's a little bit scary, but any color but black is wrong, in my humble opinion. And what this should add is just a massive amount of contrast. All right, so there we go. 
ready for any volcanic realm you can think of. Obviously you can condense this down for small models, you don't have to do as many steps, even for big models. Uh, but the important touchstones are you need to go really bright and then you need to go really dark. Um, so that's the reason for starting in your kind of middle deep red. That means you're allowed to go right up to orange, but then still you've left yourself within that red to go down to almost deep red black. All right, so we are done. There is the base again. Looks pretty shiny, looks great with a model on top of it. Um, really, really kind of ratchets it up. Uh, you could actually gloss varnish the lava section of that base. I think it would look really good uh, if you wanted to push the contrast again between the matte, uh, kind of matte rocks on top or also just contrast more harshly with the miniature on top of it. If you want to play around with the colours, absolutely like fill your boots, you could get in some green tones in there or whatever. The idea is you, you've kind of got a barren wasteland that the lava's made its way to, you're not in the middle of like a volcano. So I'm not going for like sooty or particularly rocky looking um, <clears throat> areas that slightly different approach to it, but it leaves you with a, a kind of a bit more of a soft base and it probably plays more uh, more nicely with a, a broader spectrum of models if you are going to stand it on because like I mean round basing is it's hard to go wrong with isn't it um, rather than going for like super matte black which sometimes can look a little bit strange depending on the model that's on top of it so thank you very much for watching uh, please like please comment please subscribe hit that bell notification to see our future content and as I mentioned at the beginning if you do want to see the big guy uh, we will link him below uh, he turned out fantastically and he's the little guy that we get to stand on top of our base